Hey everybody, it's Daniel here from Mobile Syrup, and uh, this is the HTC One. This is the final retail product that you'll find in stores on April 19th. And uh, before we did the review, I just wanted to give you a quick look at the box. I know that a uh, few people have uh, requested that, so you'll see all the stats here. It's got a uh, Snapdragon 600 processor at 1.7 gigahertz, 2 gigs of RAM, 32 gigabytes of internal storage. It's got that gorgeous 4.7 inch 1080p display, stereo speakers on the front with boom sound and beats audio. It has uh, a 4 megapixel ultra pixel camera with an f2.0 lens, 28 millimeters focal length, and an LED flash with image chip 2. It's also got HTC Zoe. It's a 2.1 megapixel front facing camera with an 88 degree wide angle front facing lens, and all the good stuff Bluetooth 4.0. Um, Wi-Fi, GPS, blah blah blah. So let's uh, crack this baby open and see what's going on. So this is the Rogers version and we have a uh, Rogers SIM in here and there's the packaging. It's a very simple packaging. Uh, let's take this out and we can turn it on and while we wait for it to turn on we can just put it on the side here. And let's check what's in the box. So we have a uh, charger we have a USB cord, and we have a uh, what is this? Little little headphones, and we also have a an opener for the SIM card slot, which uh, you can see just plugs in right there, and all your little manuals and stuff. So not a whole lot. Um, you can see there is a nice HTC sticker on the bottom that you can affix to your desktop PC, like uh, I did in the old days. So let's close this up. And let's take a look at the device itself. So here we have it. It's the HTC One. Um, it's actually quite a uh, lovely piece of hardware. Uh, it's beautifully, beautifully built. It's a single piece of aluminum with a pyramid um, uh, scheme inside. So the battery is actually behind the screen and then there's the uh, other electronics as well um, behind it kind of in a uh, bigger to small, uh, big in the back to smaller in the front. So it's actually a really um, nice design. It keeps everything really compact. Uh, it's also got uh, some interesting features here. So let's take a look at them. Uh, first of all, you can see that the sides are what's called uh, chamfered edges, and that's um, a very precision style of manufacturing. Uh, that uh, actually, this whole thing takes 200 minutes of. Um, manufacturing for each device it's um, what what happens is it's blasted with water while the um, machining is taking place so it's very 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 secure uh, it's extremely hardy and uh, this aluminum will not break at all uh, especially uh, under you know un under normal circumstances we're not saying that it's not going to uh, dent if you drop it but it's certainly much hardier than uh, some other uh, you know, glass or even some of the polycarbonates that are on the market. It also feels fantastic in the hand with the matte finish in the back here. So let's just take a look around the device and we'll see on the front we have the HTC logo. We have two speakers. There's an LED notification on the top left, I think on the third little, uh, little rivet here. And you can see that there's all of these speakers have actually been individually uh, individually blasted, so they're they're very very um, very uniform and extremely extremely attractive. We have the front facing camera as well, the 2.1 megapixels. On the bottom, we have the back and home button with an HTC logo that doesn't do anything. And over here, we have the second speaker and the uh, second speaker and the microphone as well built in. So that's really nice. You also have um, Sorry, the microphone's actually on the bottom here. We have a micro USB port on the bottom as well. And on the left side, we have the SIM card extractor, SIM card slot. And on the right, we have the volume rocker. That's a single piece of aluminum. Really nice to uh, feel in, in the fingers. There's a power button on the top left, which also doubles as an IR blaster, so you can control your TV and you have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack as well. On the back we have that 4 megapixel ultra pixel camera and another microphone for 
uh, noise cancellation, and we have NFC here. So you see this line, that's actually where the NFC is, uh, is placed, and the, the, um, the copper coil is actually wrapped around the back here. So it's a really nice design. And in order to ensure that there's no attenuation on the device when, held it, when holding it in the hand, because this is an all-metal device which actually attenuates signal, there's a piece of polycarbonate that comes around. So it's not entirely aluminum, but it's mostly aluminum, and uh, definitely gives it a nice finish when you're holding it on the sides here, because aluminum can be slippery. So it's very, very well made. It's actually one of the most unique and attractive devices on the market. The only thing that I can see from the get-go is that it doesn't have a multitasking button like the HTC One X and HTC One S, and that's going to uh, uh, give a couple, um, throw, show us a couple issues down the road. But for now, let's actually just go through the setup screen because this is one of the best setup screens that we've seen. So you're going to go start. You're going to select your Wi-Fi network, and I'm just going to um, to select mine here. So we have the Wi-Fi here, and we're going to connect to it. And one thing that I want to show you is that HTC is trying to really simplify the startup experience by allowing you to synchronize all of your data with uh, previous HTC devices. So what that means is that any settings that you've backed up, you can actually restore them. And we're going to go here and we're going to restore from an old phone, restore from an HTC backup, or you can actually... Um, use the web-based startup guide, which is something that HTC released last year. We're, we're going to go um, with neither of these, but uh, if you say from an old phone, you can actually select which phone and it'll give you specific instructions on how to do that. If you want to select from an HTC backup, you just log in with your HTC account and everything that you've synchronized will already be there. Uh, we're actually not going to do this now. We're just going to start from scratch and you can see that it's going to give you the option of accessing your HTC account, your Google account, your ActiveSync mail, Dropbox. You get 25 gigabytes of Dropbox storage from here. And there's also things like, you know, Twitter, Facebook, Flickr for HTC phones, LinkedIn. And those actually synchronize your photos as well in the gallery. Well, we're not going to do that right now. We're just going to start and go straight to the uh, startup screen. So now that we're in... This is the first screen that you'll see on the device. And what it does is it actually um, shows you something called BlinkFeed. And BlinkFeed is a new um, feature that HTC has launched with the HTC One and Sense5. It allows you to consolidate many of your social networking uh, accounts as well as your calendar and any other bits of information, news that you might be interested in. So what you can do is you can add specific information like um, where you want to see uh, your information from, Facebook, Flickr, Twitter, LinkedIn, calendar. You can also put up your favorite TV shows, for example. So it's also, it's, it's all very convenient. Uh, this is the Rogers version, so you'll see some pre-installed stuff in a Rogers account. There's actually quite a little bit of bloatware here, so you'll see uh, voicemail, you'll see one number, one contact, navigator, there's ringtones, there's a shop, there's also city video which is one of Roger's new digital um, digital assets and uh, actually not a bad little app. So you'll see the default app menu here is a 3x3 three three grid and you can change that by going to grid size and that's one thing that I would do right away is change it to a 4.5 grid size because it's going to take you a while to navigate through and you'll see that you can actually put folders inside your uh, app drawer and that's a first that I know of for an Android device and that actually makes everything um, organized just a little bit better and you'll see that unlike most Android phones what you see in your four icon dock actually goes into your app drawer so um, you actually, they actually disappear from your app drawer when you put it in the four icon dock. And it corresponds, of course, to your lock screen. So if I want to get straight into my SMS app, for example, I can do that just by dragging at uh, the home screen. So let's go a little bit further into the rabbit hole. Uh, you can see that 
the navigation is a little bit um, it's a little bit different from some Android devices that you may be used to. So going back, that's normal, but there's no multitasking menu. So how do you access it? Well, you double tap on the home button and it lets you get into uh, the multitasking menu. Um, to access Google Now, you can either tap on the widget or you can hold down the menu button and that will access Google Now. Uh, because I haven't logged into a uh, Google account yet, it's not gonna know anything about me, but uh, traditionally you'd see things that you've saved from your previous Google uh, searches as well as cards that Google has uh, deemed appropriate for you. Uh, so that's, uh, that's kind of the navigation. And if you go down here, you'll see that there's a power save mode as well, and you can quickly get into these settings that way. Uh, so going to the about menu, you see that um, you, can ch you can check out the software. Android 4.1.2 with Sense version 5. This is the shipping software number 1.29.631.4 and uh, there should be some upgrades coming in the near future to fix some aberrations with the camera and whatnot but overall this is a very stable version of Android and something that um, even though it's not quite the newest version of Android it's definitely one of the better iterations of skinned Android that we've seen. If you go into power you can see that um, you can see usage, you can see history, and it'll show you exactly what you've been doing. Power Saver is uh, a little bit uh, underwhelming because it doesn't let you whitelist any of your um, apps. So for example, if, um, if I have Power Saver turned on, it will turn off the data connection when I go to sleep, as well as turn off vibrate and lower the brightness and uh, kind of conserve the CPU. But it doesn't let me whitelist specific apps, so I, unlike the Xperia, Z, uh, Xperia ZL, I can't say, okay, I want to get my Gmails or I want to get my Twitter notifications when uh, Power Saver's turned on. And it's also a permanent fixture up here, which uh, I saw for the first time on the HTC One X Plus and I really had an issue with and I still don't like it there. But at least there's no icon uh, until you scroll down on the notification bar. So that's it. Uh, it's swiping, um, sorry, doing a little helicopter gesture allows you to add more home screens for example and uh, you can add more home screens like that you can also change your default home screen by holding down on one of the home screens and dragging it into set as default so if you don't want to see blink feed as your default screen you can just change it very easily now one of the other things that uh, i want to show you is the camera and the camera is one of the best features on the htc one it's extremely fast and what it also does is it creates um, highlight videos. So there's some discrepancy uh, among reviewers between Zoe and highlight videos. So Zoe is actually a feature of the camera. And what it does is it takes video and photos together while the highlight videos are the result of your stills and your Zoe. So you can see here, if I'm taking a photo, it takes an individual photo. But if I'm taking a Zoe, you can see the red bar fill up and it's actually taking videos as well as photos. So it gives you that kind of lifelike, um, you know, camera experience. And if I want to take video, which is available at uh, 1080p, I can also take photos while I'm recording video. So that's, um, that's one of the features of the uh, screen uh, of the camera. And if we go in here, we can see the menu. So you have HDR, you can have panorama, you can change the scene, uh, slow motion video. You can actually capture 720p video at 60 frames per second, which is absolutely incredible. You can also capture a 1080p HDR video, which is something that HTC is not really talking about, but it's an excellent, excellent feature. Changing the ISO setting, you'll get better low light. Uh, the low light capabilities of this camera, because it's uh, the, the pixels themselves are larger than a typical phone camera, the results are absolutely incredible. You'll see better low light results than even the Lumia 920. And we'll do a comparison in the coming days uh, with the Lumia 920 and the HTC One and a couple other devices like the iPhone 5 and uh, the Xperia ZL. But this one just blows them away. It's actually an, an amazing, amazing camera. Uh, it's also four by three by default. So your default uh, photos are gonna be widescreen, which is something not everybody likes, but I really like it because it goes better on, uh, you know, for sharing and, and, and whatnot. Uh, the other, there there's some amazing features here. You can also upload them to your default um, uh, services. 
such as Dropbox or Flickr. So that's another thing that uh, I really like about the camera experience. Uh, let's go into another app. Uh, let's go into the browser. So you can see that this is pretty much the default uh, Google browser and it does not um, it does not come standard with Chrome, but Facebook and Twitter are pre-installed. So, oh, it does actually come with Chrome, my, my apologies. So Chrome is pre-installed and that's a better app in my opinion. Uh, there's also a lot of other Google pre-installs here, but they're not messy. And one thing that we really like is that none of the bloatware from Rogers is uh, taking up your precious app tray. It's all within a single folder, which is really nice. Uh, we'd like to be able to delete some of these apps. Most of them are deletable. So, for example, um, let's go into the app screen and let's see if we can delete ringtone. So you just you drag it to the top, you uninstall it, and there you go. It's actually deleted. It's not just disabled. So uh, these are stored in the uh, data folder rather than the system folder, which allows you to delete uh, whatever you want. Another feature that I wanted to show you is the TV uh, service. So that actually allows you to control your TV using, um, I'm going to put in M6J4E6. Now that's not my real postal code, so please don't look me up. Um, the different servers are available, so you can have Bell TV, Direct TV, Dish, Shaw, and Telus. Um, surprisingly, Rogers is not here. Strange. Uh, but let's go with... Oh, that's because the postal code that I use probably doesn't have Rogers. There you go. So let's go with TELUS. And what you can see is that it downloads all of the channels that may be accessible from, um, from your TELUS satellite. And you can choose the ones that you want, and once you have them, uh, you can also add HTC Watch, which is a uh, downloadable service. And there you go. So you can select some of your favorite shows. I like Big Bang Theory, How I Met Your Mother, uh, Friends, House, The Office. And what we what it can do is it can actually show you when your favorite TV shows are on. And it can remind you and uh, set recordings. Everything that you'd find on a dedicated DVR remote you would find here as well. Uh, this is powered by um, a company called um, P Peak, I think. Uh, let's, let me just find out exactly. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a company that's, that provides the same service for, um, for Samsung as well. So that's something that you might want to keep in mind. This will be very similar to the experience you'll have on your, um, on your uh, Galaxy S4 if you do decide to get that. Now, one of the things that uh, I wanted to keep in mind here is whereas the, you know, most of the apps that you'll find here are you know full screen something like uh, Twitter or Facebook now Twitter has been updated since then but I just wanted to give you this as an example you'll see that virtual menu button here which uh, is unchangeable you can't actually do anything about it uh, because unlike the HTC One X you could change the multitasking menu the multitasking button to uh, facilitate a menu press but with this, it doesn't actually have that multitasking button, so you're forced to use the on-screen button until the developers update their apps. Now, that's very unfortunate. And while many most apps are um, updated and you won't see that virtual menu button, it does take up space and it just is very distracting. And I'd really like to see a solution to that without having to root or uh, you know do strange things to my ROM. So, uh, a couple of other things that I wanted to point out. The uh, messaging app is just really nice and clean, and it also shows us the new uh, keyboard, which is a huge improvement over the one in Sense 4. Uh, the, it does allow gesture typing like Swipe or Swift Key Flow, but it's just an overall uh, fantastic keyboard. It's way, way, way better than anything I've seen on uh, any other OEM. So we'll, we'll compare it to the a Swift key powered version of the Galaxy S4 keyboard, but until then, this is by far the best keyboard you'll find on a uh, on an Android device uh, straight out of the box. I, I still do prefer Swift key from the Play Store, but if you don't want to spend money, this is a great option. Uh, other things include an amazing mail app, very very nice people app, and let's go into the gallery to see exactly um, exactly what I was talking about with those uh, highlight videos. So what it does is it takes the photos that you've that you've taken on a daily basis so it divides them into days or events and it creates 30 second highlight videos 
So you can see here when I tap on it, it'll create a 30 second or roughly about, and you can see it comes with a little video and it determines the music um, and the theme based on what you've taken. So it's all algorithmically generated and I can change up the theme if I want. So let's go select content. I can choose which photos I want as well. So I want all of these amazing photos that are just brilliant. And then I go there and I can I can select the different uh, I, I can select the different themes as well. So we can also check out the amazing quality of these speakers too while we're at it. So one thing to say about these speakers is that there's not a single device on this on the market that comes close to competing with the quality of these uh, front-facing speakers. Not only are there two of them for you know, it may, it may not be huge dynamic range, it may not have excellent bass, it may not, you know, show you, um, you know, the spatial separation that you would find on of, of a regular speaker set, but these are just very loud, they're very accurate, and they're, they're just pleasant to listen to. You can actually listen to music on them without feeling like you're going to uh, go deaf from all the shrill treble that's uh, invading your your ears. So that's one thing to really keep in mind. The other the other thing is that um, the sound quality on the headpiece is fantastic, calls sound really good, and overall to be to use this as a phone is uh, tremendously, tremendously uh, easy and just feels great. So you know you may be buying this as a smartphone, but to, to use this as a phone is also uh, fantastic. So uh, one thing to keep in mind, this is LTE compatible, so you do have access to all those LTE networks, whether you buy it on Bell, Rogers, or TELUS. You have 32 gigs of storage um, available, although 7 gigs is taken up straight out of the box, and that's um, you know from certain preloaded stuff. So you may want to keep in mind if you do uh, want to, if you do want to kind of make sure that there are, you 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 can clean out some of the things here, but uh, you know, out of the box, you only have about 24 gigs free, which is still a lot. But if you may want to invest in the 64 gigabyte version, if and when it comes to Canada, or by importing a developer edition from the U.S., so that's another thing to keep in mind. And you also have a few options here, such as the ability to change the brightness and the font size, as well as the sleep pattern, which will determine more so than just a you know a, a single increment. Uh, when the device should go to sleep based on how long you've uh, you haven't touched the screen for uh, The other thing is that you can change the double click speed for the multitasking menu And now that you've seen all the apps that we've opened you can actually just Pull them away and close them up when you're done with them. So that's really convenient uh, There isn't really that much else to explore here. There is a kids mode for people who uh, want to be able to set limitations on uh, what their kids can use the phone with. And there's some Google pre-install pre such as uh, Playbooks and uh, there's an FM radio, there's HTC Watch as well. Um, nothing nothing too new and crazy here. So we're gonna end the video there because it's been um, nearly 25 minutes and uh, you've probably gotten bored of my stuttery voice by now. But if you have watched through this, just uh, know that you know, while the Galaxy S4 is coming out very soon, this is definitely the device to beat right now. You know, it's not that expensive. It's 150 on a two on a three-year term, 650 outright. It's a fantastic device. Definitely one of the best devices on the market. You can see that the um, screen is just absolutely stunning. And we'll finish off the video by showing some of these preloaded preloaded um, photos because it just and although you, it doesn't really do it justice on this video, you can see just how sharp the the screen is how amazing the viewing angles are and it's just a fantastic experience so this has been the HTC One and it's available on April 19th from Rogers, Telus, Bell and Virgin this has been Daniel from Mobile Syrup thank you for watching